Hi everyone, Ravi this side. Welcome to Engineering Adda. In this video, we are going to discuss about the important features of Spring Boot. What makes Spring Boot so much popular in development? Everything we are going to discuss in this video. So we'll start with the basic introduction of Spring Boot and then we'll try to discuss about the important features of Spring Boot. What make Spring Boot so much popular? Everything we are going to discuss here. So let's get started and uh, let me try to go to the next slide. So I have listed out a couple of important features of Spring Boot and here briefly we are going to discuss about those features. If you want to deep dive into the features, how to implement those features, uh, I have a lot of videos on my channel. You can go and watch it out. Only you have to do is you have to visit the channel, you have to search for the playlist or you have to search for the particular uh, videos and then you can be very much clear about the important features of a Spring Boot and how to implement it in a Spring Boot application. Okay. So first of all, let me try to read it out. What is a Spring Boot? So Spring Boot is a popular framework for building Java based production ready and stand alone applications. It simplifies the development process by providing a set of conventions, configuration and the tools. So each framework provide you couple of tools, but Spring Boot is loaded with a lot of development tools and the features that help us in smoothening our development process. That is why Spring Boot is very much popular. Here are some of the small concept and the features of Spring Boot that I have listed out and one by one I will try to read it out and try to explain it. The first feature is auto configuration. So what do you mean by the auto configuration? Auto configuration means it automatically configures the beans that is being created in your project. Okay, so let me try to read it out for you so that it will be more clear. Spring Boot provides auto configuration which automatically configures beans based upon the dependency that you have in your project. So if you will auto wire a dependency in your class, then Spring Boot automatically create a bean for it and assign it to the application context. And wherever you want to use that bean, you can automatically use it. So every time when you are going to auto wire the bean for that particular class, you don't have to create the object for it. It is created only once and it is assigned to the application context and wherever you want it, you can use it. And it is done by the Spring Boot itself. That means it is automatically configured. Okay, and uh, you can also write your custom auto configuration classes if you want. Uh, how, how you can do it, I already have covered in couple of my videos. Now the next feature is a standalone application. What does it mean? It means that you can create a standalone application which can run in itself. Okay, so Spring Boot application are designed to be standalone. Standalone means it is standing alone. It does not require any other things to make it up and running. Okay, so Spring Boot application are designed to be standalone, meaning they can be run with a simple Java minus jar command and they come with an embedded web servers like Tomcat by default. So when uh, in the earlier days when we were developing a web application, we need an external server to deploy that application and run that application on the external server. But nowadays the Spring Boot provides the embedded servers in it so that it make the Spring Boot application stand alone. It does not depends upon the external servers. Okay, that is what it is told here that Spring Boot application are designed to be standalone, meaning they can be run with a simple Java minus jar command and they come with an embedded web server like Tomcat. Okay, uh, let me try to explain you the meaning uh, that they can be run with a simple Java minus jar command. So let's say you have created one Spring Boot standalone applications and the embedded Tomcat server is there inside it. Then if you want to deploy that server or if you want to run that server, you have to take, uh, you have to make that 
uh, application in a jar file and then simply with the help of this command java minus jar you can make your application up and running or you can deploy your application to the uh, let's say cloud and make your application up and running there itself so this is what it means so here uh, the conclusion is spring boot help us to create a standalone application a standalone means it does not require anything uh, from the external world to make it up and running okay now the third feature is spring boot starters so starters are pre-confined templates that simplify the inclusion of the commonly used dependencies so spring boot starter is uh, nothing but is starter dependency that you can include in, in your spring boot application while you are going to develop your application so that a small chunk of work is automatically done so it is a predefined template that simplifies the inclusion of commonly used dependencies for example the spring boot starter web uh, dependency includes everything you need to build a web application so let's say you are going to create a spring boot application and you want to create that spring boot application as a web application so when you are going to create a spring boot application as a web application you need at least a server so that you can make your application up and running right so in order to include that server you need to include a starter dependency which is spring boot starter web if you include that it will come with a embedded servers and on which your application can be up and running so uh, like a this is the example of wave uh, services there are a lot of starters services or starter dependency that is spring boot provides which help us in our development which is our development process like spring data jpa which help us in doing a, a jpa related work there is a lombok which help us in avoiding the boilerplate code. So there are uh, like lot of starter dependencies are there in Spring Boot that make our life very easy. Now let me try to go to the next slide and try to discuss couple of more features of Spring Boot. So here comes the embedded servers that we already discussed I think. Yeah, Spring Boot supports embedded servers like Tomcat, JT, Undertow, eliminating the need to deploy your application to a separate servers. I already have discussed this. Now the next feature is externalized configuration. So let's say uh, you don't have to, uh, every time you don't have to create a pom.xml file to do a configuration. Here Spring Boot provides the externalized configuration in the form of application.properties file or application.yml file or the other features are also environment variables and the command line argument so with the help of these tools you can do a externalized configuration of your spring boot application let's say you want to uh, uh, like set your port number on which you want to make your application up and running so ex externally you can do it using the application.properties files so you have to go to the application.properties files there you have to provide the uh, configuration for that which is a kind of external configuration which if you want to change in the future you directly go to the application.properties file and you can change it out so this is one of the example uh, there are a lot of configuration that you have to do or you do when you are developing a spring boot application using the application.properties or application.yml file okay so this is one of the example one of the features of a spring boot now the next is a spring boot actuator which is one of the most important feature of a spring boot uh, there is a video on my channel I uh, have covered about the Spring Boot actuator what it is and how you can include it and how it help us in making a application as a production ready application. So it provides a built in feature for monitoring and managing your application in production including health checks, matrices and application environment details. So Spring Boot actuator is a kind of uh, I would say starter dependency that you need to include in your application and it help us in providing a lot of uh, I would say ready ready made APIs that help us in monitoring and managing the application health or application in general I would say okay so this is one of the most important features it is also asked in the interview 
uh, what is the Spring Boot Actuator and how you can utilize it and why it is called as a production ready features. So you have to, uh, there is a video on my channel, you can go and watch it out. Now coming to the next feature which is the Spring Boot Dev Tools. This is also a kind of a starter dependency that help us in automatically restart your application. So uh, by default, if you are creating a Spring Boot application, if you, you have not included the dev tools as a starter dependency in your Spring Boot application, then every time when you make some changes in your application, you have to rerun your application. But when you have included the dev tools in your Spring Boot application, what you have to do, you have to make your changes and then you just have to save your changes and then it will automatically restart your application and your new changes are loaded. So this is uh, also a very uh, like developer friendly tool. Uh, yeah, this is one of the cool feature of a Spring Boot application. These tools provide automatic restart, browser live reload and other development time features to enhance the development experience. Now let me try to go to the next slide and try to discuss a couple of other features. So one of is the Spring Boot Slicer. Uh, this is, uh, I would say, website or you can also see this uh, tool in the IntelliJ Ultimate version or STS version where you can directly go and create your Spring Boot application. So you can say a web-based tool that generate a basic Spring Boot project structure with your chosen dependency and the settings. Okay, so this is one of the site or you can say a tool that help us in creating a Spring Boot application where you can directly go and provide your details of the Spring Boot applications, artifact name and uh, artifact ID, sorry, and the other settings and the dependency that you want to choose. Everything you can go there and use it and then create your ap application. Now the next feature is, is Spring Boot Profiles. Uh, currently, I have a video on my channel, which is the latest video, which is about the Spring Boot profiles, uh, which says how to use the Spring Boot profiles and how to set the Spring Boot active profile. So first of all, if you don't know what is the Spring Boot profile, so let me try to explain you about this. So profiles means when you are developing uh, applications, there would be multiple profile of that application, like dev, test, production, UAT. So how you can manage those profiles and how you can play with those profiles, uh, this is what Spring Boot profiles tell us. And let me try to read it out for you. It's profiles allow you to configure different part of your application for a different environment, such as development, testing, and the production. So how to use it? I have a separate video on my channel. You can go and watch it out. Now the next feature is Spring Data JPA. So you might have heard about the Spring Data GPA. Uh, let me try to read it out. This is one of the commonly used feature of Spring Boot application. Spring Boot simplifies the use of GPA, which is Java Persistent API for database accesses. Okay, it includes automatic repository creation, query methods, and transaction management. So this is one of the starter dependency that you need to include in order to simplify your database work. So Spring Data JPA provides a list of, uh, I would say, features that help us in automatically creating the repository and couple of methods it also have provided which help us in uh, interacting with the database like save, find all, uh, find by name, delete, all those methods are automatically created by the JPA and that help us to interact with the uh, database. Okay. Now, Coming to the next feature, which is Spring Security. This is one of the most important feature of Spring Boot. Uh, I have a video on my channel where I uh, discussed about how to uh, like how to implement the Spring Security in a Spring Boot application and how to do the authentications and authorization. Everything we have discussed there. Let me try to read it out for you. So you can easily configure security features such as authentication and authorization using Spring Security in Spring Boot application. So this is Spring Security features provides us the uh, authentication and authorization feature of Spring Security. Okay. Now let me try to go to the next slide and 
let me try to also wrap some key features of the Spring Boot, which is Spring Boot test. So Spring Boot provides a variety of testing tools like JUnit and a uh, couple of other testing tools are also there and uh, annotations related to the Spring Boot test is also there such as Spring Boot test and Mock, Mock MVC. There are a lot range of uh, tools and the annotations are there for the testing in Spring Boot. You can go and watch it out on my channel. I have covered it in a sem uh, separate video. So this, this features provide us uh, testing related tools and uh, annotations that help us to do the testing in Spring Boot application. Or you can say to simplify the testing of your Spring Boot application. Now coming to the next feature which is Spring Boot CLI. The Spring Boot command line interface is a tool for running and testing a Spring Boot application from the command line. Okay, so this is one of the uh, tool which Spring Boot provides using which you can run and test your Spring Boot application through the command line. Now the next feature of Spring Boot is RESTful Web Services which is one of the most important and commonly used features of the Spring Boot. Spring Boot is a well suited for building RESTful Web Services using Spring Web MVC or Spring Web Flux for the reactive application. So if you don't know how to develop a Spring Boot Web MVC and how to create a Spring Boot application for the CRUD operations and uh, what is the Spring Web Flux, how to do a reactive programming. So everything is covered on my channel. You can go and watch it out. So this is one of the features is Spring uh, RESTful Web Services. This is one of the most important features of Spring Boot uh, where we where we can develop a Spring Boot Web MVC application and Spring Boot Web Flux applications. Now the next feature is Spring Boot data source. So Spring Boot simplifies the configuration of the data sources including support for the JDBC, JP and the non-SQL databases. So this Spring Boot data source is a kind of tool that help us in configuring with the uh, I would say JPA or JDBC and the no like different type of databases. So this is a kind of tool that help us in interacting with the different kind of databases. Okay, now let me try to go to the next slide and uh, let me try to tell you about this next feature which is theme leaf and free make marker. Okay, so Spring Boot supports template engines like theme leaf and free marker for server side rendering in the web application. So this help us in server side rendering of the web application. Okay. Now the next feature is Spring Boot microservices. Nowadays you have uh, heard a lot about the microservices architecture and Spring Boot is very much helpful in developing a microservices. So Spring Boot provides a lot of features that help us in development of the microservices. So this is one of the key features uh, I would say about the Spring Boot that it is the development architecture like microservices. So it is commonly used for building microservices due to its ease of use, embedded servers and support for the containerization. Okay. Now the next feature is Spring Boot annotations. So Spring Boot has a lot of annotations or I would say a range of annotations that help is help us in the development of the application. So this is also one of the features Spring Boot annotations. Spring Boot provides a range of annotations for marking classes and the methods simplifying the various aspect of the application development. So these are the important features of the Spring Boot. If you like the video, please hit the like button and please subscribe the channel for more such content. Thanks.